Good Morning Anatomy, Ms. Schneider, and Sydney Hinton. You remember when she came and talked to us? Yay! She's home from med school, or almost med school, <laughs> to help us out. Oh, I'll grab the bucket. Drippy. Mm -hmm. mm, here is our cow heart and lung set. So we're going to be learning the circulatory system today, the structures of the heart. Um, I will make another video and go over the structures of the respiratory system because we'll be learning that in a couple weeks. So we'll go over the respiratory system in a couple weeks. Um, but just to kind of get you to touch base so you know where we're at. Here's the lung. Squishy. Big lung trachea. Here is a whole bunch of fat. And flip her on over. And we'll get to that later. So here is our heart. Okay, so we're getting ready to reveal the heart. And remember the sac that the heart is enclosed in is called the pericardium. So we've cut through the pericardium, that sac, and it's a really tough and fibrous sac. I can't tear it with my hands. I'm pushing really hard, and that pericardium is not tearing open. So it's a really tough fibrous sac that protects and surrounds the heart. Do this on the camera. <laughs> Dissection, this is my dissection scalpel today. <laughs> and so you can see the inside of that pericardium around the heart. And then the big portion of the heart, if you remember the big portion of the heart, those are the ventricles. So this is the big, large, muscular portion. And then... Towards the top of the heart, I have an atrium. And on the other side, I have the other atrium in here. So the atrium are receiving chambers. They receive blood, they fill up, and then all they have to do is push blood down into the larger ventricles. Um, a common question I have is, why is there so much fat on the heart? This, the white stuff is all fat on the heart. And it's normal to have fat on the heart. You should have some fat on the heart. But the problem with American diets is that we have way too much fat in our diet and we have too much fat around our hearts. Um, and so that can be a problem, but it's healthy to have some fat around your heart. You should have some. Sorry, my little mouth. This is a normal amount for every cow I've seen. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is about what I've seen on cows whenever I've dissected them before. Um, now I'm going to try and cut into the ventricles so we can see inside the heart. Um, when we get in here, there is probably going to be some blood inside of some of these chambers. Um, so we'll take a look at what that is. We're going to try and see, hopefully I slice it the correct way. Um, you have your two ventricles, and hopefully I've got it where the septum is going down the middle. So I'm going to try and slice it open, see if we have it the correct way. Oh, I did it wrong. <laughs> And you can see that here is a right ventricle. And then I'm going to cut through this, and you'll be able to see into the left ventricle. So here is my left ventricle. 
And here's the right ventricle. Why is one so much larger than the other? Um, if you remember about um, the pathway of blood through the heart, as you're learning about the pathway of blood through the heart, blood comes in through the right atrium from the body. It goes to the right ventricle. It comes in through this, through the right ventricle. Then the right ventricle squeezes, contracts, and it sends blood to the lungs. Notice the lungs are right here, close by. Then it comes back from the lungs into the left atrium. Left atrium squeezes, pushes it into the left ventricle. And then when the left ventricle contracts, it pushes blood to the whole body. So much more muscle, thicker muscle around here because it has to push it a much farther distance. Um, inside the heart, you have valves. So inside the heart, that's what these white structures are, are the valves. It's, like, it's hard to breathe in a mask. Yeah. <sighs> so um, the valves are between, there's a valve between the atrium and a ventricle. There's a valve between an atrium and a ventricle over here, and there's a valve after the blood leaves the ventricles. When the heart contracts, squeezes blood out of the ventricles, there is a valve that is between that artery and the ventricle. What's a valve's job? A valve's job is to prevent backflow of blood into the heart. And so they snap closed whenever a contraction happens. So if my ventricle squeeze, it snaps closed the valves so blood doesn't go backwards into the atrium or the atrial chambers. Um, inside of here, these are the chordae tendinae. These help to hold the valves in place so that way the valves don't um, flip back and forth. A valve is a one-way passage. So one-way passage, if blood is flowing, and this is my valve, blood is gonna be flowing this way. And so whenever my ventricle contracts, if it's up here, I don't want my blood to flow down. So those cords help keep the chamber or the valves from going like this. Because if your valve does this, it's not gonna prevent any flow. So those cords help to hold it in place. In other internal structures, this is the septum. The septum separates your right and your left ventricles. Septum. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Separates your right and your left ventricles. It's a wall between those two chambers. Um, before a baby is born, before a baby is born, the septum is not completely formed. There's actually a hole between it because babies get their oxygen from the placenta. So it doesn't matter if blood is going to their lungs or to their body and if it mixes. So before a baby's born, this is actually an open section between them. Once a baby's born, there's a pressure differential change that causes those to kind of seal up. And um, as long as they seal up correctly, everything's fine. Are there ever problems? Yes, there's sometimes when that doesn't seal properly. Okay, on the outside of the heart, the exterior of the heart, remembering that these are the ventricles. Ventricles make a V if my heart's up right in my chest. Ventricles make a V. Um, your heart, human hearts, are about the size of your fist. So if you put your fist and it's about in the center of your chest, ventricles are on the bottom. Ventricles make the letter V. There's two of them inside of the heart. So that's your ventricles on the bottom. And then your two atrial chambers are on the top and they look like little flaps. So there's one and the other one is tucked up way underneath of here. And then on the outside of the heart, even though blood is flowing through the heart, that's not how the heart gets its nutrients and its oxygen supply. It has to have its own nutrients and oxygen supply. Um, so on the outside of the heart, you'll see these So these are the arteries that supply its blood on the outside of the heart. Sometimes I can get blood to kind of flow through one. 
these, remember the heart's upside down, and these are the coronary arteries and coronary veins that supply the network of blood to the heart so the heart can get its own oxygen. Um, a myocardial infarction or a heart attack is when one of these has become blocked and a portion of the heart is not receiving the oxygen that it needs to be able to do its job. And so if right here, if there was a blockage in this, and so all of this area would not be receiving the oxygen that it needs, it would stop functioning. And so that's your myocardial infarction where um, that would not be firing. Um, atherosclerosis is the buildup of plaques inside of an artery. And so I have a little model that kind of demonstrates what that might look like. This is a pipe that was in one of the sinks in my classroom. And in this pipe, it's got a huge clot inside of there. Am I showing it to the right one? <laughs> and so you can see a buildup of calcium inside of here and deposits that are inside of here. And so in um, your coronary arteries, if something like this were to happen and you have fat and cholesterol deposits that build up inside of there, it'll prevent blood flowing to those areas. Um, you've probably heard of bypass surgery. So on a bypass surgery, if we're talking about that same artery over here, if we're talking about this artery and there's a clog right here in this artery, you're going to literally bypass it. And they usually take um, a vein from your leg and pull out the vein from your leg and then they suture it in here, go around it and bypass that clot and suture it in here to restore blood flow to that area of the heart. If I have a quadruple bypass surgery, how many places have I just bypassed? So that's what those are if you've heard those terms. Blood um, veins that bring blood back to the heart, arteries away, arteries take blood away from the heart. So starting with blood coming from the body, blood comes from the body in the vena cava, largest vein. And so I'm going to put my hand on the vena cava and it goes into the right atrium. Right atrium empties into the right ventricle. Right ventricle pushes blood out of the heart through an artery to the lungs. So if I go out of my heart to the lungs, this stick right here is moving. I'm grabbing that stick. I'm going out through the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery takes blood to the lungs, lungs. Then blood comes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein goes into the left atrium. Left atrium is buried underneath of here. It's hard to see. Left atrium. And I'll open it up and we can kind of see that left atrium way up inside of here is the left atrium. And then left atrium empties into the left ventricle. Left ventricle squeezes and pushes blood out the aorta. And again, I'm moving that stick because my fingers are in the aorta and the aorta immediately branches inside. And you have a large branch going this way. We've cut a hole inside of it and a smaller branch going this way. So the aorta immediately branches and it goes to the body. 